conditioning system had to be installed because the car could get very hot. There was very little ventilation. Uh, initially, you couldn't even roll down any of the windows. They put in this bulletproof glass that weighed 1,600 pounds in and of itself. Uh, the bulletproof glass added $125,000 to the cost of the vehicle. And all these improvements, they felt they had a much safer vehicle uh, for Johnson and, and succeeding administrations. And I think the whole way they looked at the limousine post-Kennedy was, we have to create a fortress for the president. We're going to have to make this sort of rolling fortress. It also had sort of an early version of run-flat tires, which was like a wheel inside of the tire. So if the tire was flat, the car could continue to drive. Far cry from basically a big open-air limousine of just a few years before. The revamped X100 cost an estimated $1 million, roughly five times more than the initial car. It weighed 9,500 pounds when completed, more than double its original weight. But despite these improvements, the simplest esoteric change in the limousine may have had the biggest impact on the public. In fact, the X100 was in presidential service through the Carter administration. Johnson needs the car for the security, doesn't want the Kennedy-ness in it, so, he, so the car's painted black. You can't help but imagine that maybe just you know, psychologically, they wanted to change the car as much as possible. Nobody wants to be riding around in the same car that somebody was shot in. And so if it visually looks different and it's different inside, it's probably a little bit easier for the public to accept. Out of respect for President Kennedy, I question uh, the fact that they did rebuild this car and use it with subsequent presidents and dignitaries. I think it should have been left the way it was. The quick fix closed the door on open parade cars forever and is the forerunner of today's heavily armored vehicles. The car moved technology forward, but it was, of course, the single event of the president being shot that was the catalyst for that. All of a sudden, they had to do something different. They had to protect the president, and they had to do it quick. So the technology of this car then sort of trickles out, and then today you have cars where even the average person can go buy a bulletproof car if they want. In today's dangerous times, making sure the president gets from here to there safely requires even more security than ever. Building practically impenetrable cars is still the goal of O'Gara, S, and Eisenhardt. When I typically bring a customer into the factory, the main purpose is really to show them how a vehicle goes through the armor process. And it gets involved in things like Kaizen, which is continuous improvement, or faster, better, cheaper. These are techniques that we incorporate into the process so that we can produce a vehicle a lot faster and with better quality, really, is what it comes down to. The incident with Kennedy has become a major influence on the presidential limousines. All limousines now have hard tops. They're all armored. That car sort of symbolized that administration, and, you know, in one day, it's just all gone. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was one of the most beloved presidents of our time. His charisma and warmth touched people all over the world. We all knew and loved President Kennedy uh, because of his aura. Uh, people loved him. There was a glow about this man no matter where he went. And it makes sense to have a car that would match his personality. The elegant X100, which was in service for 16 years, from Kennedy to Carter, now resides in the Henry Ford Museum. One of the very first reactions when people encounter the Kennedy car is to ask, is it real? Is, it, is that the real car? And in fact, we've changed the label that we have on there. So that the first sentence in the label says, yes, this is the car in which President Kennedy was riding in Dallas. And you, you stop and you pause and you say, wow, history happened there, right in front of me, in that seat. For anyone of the generation who experienced John Kennedy's presidency, there are images involving this car that will always be part of their memory. And anyone who goes into the Ford Museum, who's of a certain age, when they see that car out of the corner of their eye, without even being near it, they know immediately what the car is and what it meant. Unlike any other presidential limousine, the Kennedy car's visceral effect connects generations of visitors. If you're like an increasingly large number of our visitors who don't have a direct memory, 
Um, especially if you're there with someone who does have that memory, it's an opportunity for a kind of intergenerational transfer. It's a powerful thing because it, it, it makes the past come alive and it, at least for a moment, it, it connects you to that sort of large history of which we're really all a part. I took my son in and it was a Sunday afternoon and there weren't many people around and so I took him up and just was telling him about different things about the car, that it had a Mouton rug and it had stainless steel exhaust pipes and it was 156 inches long and it had, we used 21 hides of leather in it and the lap robe was made out of gold thread and before I knew it, there were probably 20 or 30 people were standing around. And they said, well, how do you know so much about the car? And they, my son Randy looked up at him and said, my grandpa built that car. Here you have this car that symbolizes so many things. It was new, it was stylish, it was, you know, a young president, convertible. I mean, convertibles are just cool. And you're the president riding around in this big convertible, the presidential limousine today, looks kind of stodgy and funky. It's all tall and upright, and it's not a convertible, and it's not that cool, and, you know, so that car sort of symbolized that administration, and, you know, in one day, it was just all gone. And people in my time frame, in your time frame, will never forget the day. You know, we were there. Even though it's uh, such, it seems like a long time ago, it seems like yesterday to me. More than 40 years later, this limousine triggers memories and emotions of one of our country's greatest losses. The Kennedys gave the nation a sense of excitement, inspiration, and optimism. Anything seemed possible while John F. Kennedy ruled over Camelot. And his magnificent chariot, a 1961 navy blue Lincoln Continental convertible limousine, served only to enhance that feeling. Stylistically ahead of its time, the car was introduced to much fanfare, and it turned as many heads as the first couple did. The vehicle itself is a marvel, packed with cutting-edge technology that's still considered advanced today, more than 40 years later. That such a car could carry one of America's most cherished presidents to his death is a tragic irony. Even now, in its altered configuration, the car still commands an eerie attention, sending shivers down the spine of its visitors as it sits in the Henry Ford Museum in Detroit, a symbol of America's loss of innocence. One thing is certain. That limousine, its primary passenger, and the events that took place around both in 1963 changed our history forever. I'm Bob Varsha. Thanks for watching Behind the Headlights. Join us again soon for another story of an incredible automobile.